you know, in that Jewish context, the people of Israel were remembering the days of old when the people of Israel were wandering in the wilderness and they had that tabernacle that represented the dwelling place of God, God's presence with them, God's involvement with them. And so the first half of that verse, John 1.14, talks about identification. And the second half of the verse talks about involvement. Our God, the one and only God who became a human being, actually lived among us. I love the way that <clears throat> theologian Helmut Thielke makes this point in one of his books. After talking about how the crib and the cross are related, Thielke writes, Jesus Christ did not remain at base headquarters in heaven receiving reports of the world's suffering from below and then shouting a few encouraging words to us from a safe distance. No, Jesus left the headquarters and came down to us in the frontline trenches, right down where we live and worry, where we contend with our anxieties and our feelings of emptiness and futility, where we sin and suffer guilt, and where we finally must die. There is nothing except sin that he did not endure with us. He understands everything. In these opening days of 2014, we're going to run into we're going to run into some difficult people. We're going to experience some discouraging and some heartbreaking situations. We face a world that has a lot of deep problems at home and abroad. This Christmas season, we again, and all, this season and always praying for peace in the Middle East, in Iraq, Afghanistan. We continue to pray for our troops there and for an end to that war. And as I was reminded in reading yesterday that we do pray that by the end of 2014, our troops will be home from Afghanistan. I have a a relative who's serving there now. And another relative, my Aunt Lois, up until two years ago, she was teaching on a military base in Germany. And she sent us this letter that she had received from the chaplain who was at that time, or that, at that, oh, well, two years ago was in Iraq. And talks about their Advent worship services at the site of a Christian church that dates back to the sixth about 600 A.D., there on the Tigris River. And Chaplain Stanley Allen of the 101st Military Intelligence Battalion wrote, Christianity is quite old in this country. Among the customs of Advent are the Advent wreath and the four candles in the circle of evergreens. Each day the candles are lit accompanied by a short prayer. And lighting the candle is symbolic of hope and everlasting light. And to do so here, in a spot where years ago people gathered to worship Jesus, gives us a sense of continuity. Christmas and Advent customs appear everywhere, with the traditions coming from people throughout the world, connecting us with the ancient faith. And then he writes, as he concludes by saying, Our faith is portable. It doesn't rely upon a building. It lives in our hearts. To add to that what he said, we could say that the faith tabernacles in our hearts, that God is present there wherever we are. And so we join with Christians, the Christians who are in Iraq and Afghanistan, and our friends in Peru, and our new friends in Zambia and Zimbabwe, many of our family and friends in Scandinavia and Germany, and every part of our own country, we light the Christ candle one more time in this season of Christmas. And we remember that the word of God, Jesus Christ, became flesh. That God loves us so much that God will continue to get involved in our world, even in the frontline trenches of communities and in our world, in order to help us and to save us and to win us back to himself. And if God loves us that much, and if God gets involved in our lives that much, then we in turn can love one another 
with the love with which we ourselves have received from God. And we in turn then can get involved in the lives of other people. Not to control them, not to masquerade as somebody else, but to really identify with them so that through us and in us they too may see and how much God does love them also. The Word of God became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have, over these past 12 days, we have loved hearing the Christmas story, from, especially from Matthew and from Luke. And today we hear the Christmas story in that one verse of, of John 1. We thank you, Lord, for, for that mystery, that truth, that reality. We thank you, Lord, for involving, identifying yourself and involving yourself in our lives in the birth of our Savior. May that incredible, amazing love so motivate us to identify and share your love with those around us and with your beloved world. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. <laughs>